Nagaland is a very beautiful state in the northeastern part of India. It is renowned all over the world and in India for its natural beauty that surrounds it. The state has lots of greenery which is still untouched by the modern day urban pollution and has an ample amount of water, greenery and lakes that enhances the state's beauty. The state's capital is Kohima with the total area of the state being 16,575 km square and with a population of 19,80,602 as of 2011 census. Nagaland is divided into 11 districts and the names of these districts are displayed on the screen. And today we'll be discussing about a very old Naga tradition, which though old is still not forgotten to this day. And that is the Naga tradition of head hunting. The Konyaks of India's northeastern state of Nagaland practiced head hunting into the 1960s. Some of those warriors are still alive today. The Konyak warrior tribes is one of the many Naga tribes. But what sets them apart from the rest of the tribes of this northeastern state of India is their fierce headhunting history, which was part of their strong warrior tradition. Territorial conflicts between rival villages and tribes were resolved through warfare, and Konyaks were the most feared for their headhunting skills. They beheaded their enemies and brought back the severed head as trophies in a specially designed basket that they carried to the battles. The heads were then proudly displayed on the walls and doorways of the warriors. The Indian government put a ban on head hunting in 1960, but Konyaks say that the tradition continued for a few more years before limited aspects of modernity were accessible in these remote parts of Nagaland. The next generation of the Konyaks practically embraced a Baptist-based Christianity. In the remote villages of Nagaland's Mon district, which borders Myanmar, a motley band of elderly farmers and former warriors are still visible. The tattooed faces and torsos be a witness to mortal combat and the once customary head hunting. It was a tradition to honor the men with tattoos on their faces and chest as a mark of their heroic deeds. The elaborate process was done only by chieftain's wife. Now mostly in the 80s, these former warriors are distinguishable also by their large ear piercing made from animal horns and war hats made from hunted wild pig's horn, hornbill feathers and wild bow or goat hair. They still carry the knives with which they killed. Born into and inheriting a strong tribal identity, the present day Konyaks are as proud of the warrior tradition as previous generations were. The skills with the door or the long handled hunting knife have been handed down through generations. All the male members of the tribe possess handmade and homemade guns fabricated in these remote villages. Thankfully, they no, they no longer resolve their conflicts with these weapons. However, the cognac festivals are often a throwback to the hunting days, where war dances with guns and knives feature predominantly, and some of the enemy's skulls buried deep in the forest are unearthed to be displayed, a remainder of a not-so-distant past. This ancient practice of head hunting is so phenomenal and significant that the Naga regiments, which is Indian armies and other paramilitary forces, youngest regiment and units are still known as the head hunters to this day. So that was all folks. Thanks for watching the video and sticking by and have a nice day.